Test, test. Test, test one. Just put that over your ears. Like this, or? Uh, the other way. Oh. Yeah, it sits on top of your ears. Okay. Like I got it. Perfect. Wow, this probably looks funny. <laughs> no, you don't have to tell me that. I don't believe it. Wow. Well, I'm very 21st century right now. Um, it's uncomfortable. I think last year, you know, that's why the audio didn't work last year, because I refused to use this and I used that. That's what it is. And now I figured out, I can't blame Linux Fest for that now. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm also learning out, le I'm learning what it's like to be a Mac user, because I have two adapters chained here to make this work. Um, this is, I mean, ThinkPad, they used to just have DisplayPort, but then they're like, no, we're going to change it. We're not going to change it to HDMI. We're going to change it to mini display port. It's like, I don't know what they're thinking. Um, I'm good. How are you? Okay. All right. It's already 4 o'clock. Oh, no. Why isn't it showing up? It might not work, and I might just have to do a lecture on why technology is terrible, and you should all quit your jobs. And um, But you probably already know that anyway, so I don't need to tell you that. Oh. I guess it takes plugs into the USB. How does that even work? Why does it do that? I'm really trying to, oh, whoa. We did it, Reddit. <laughs> all right, all right, that's the end of my talk. Thank you, go home, kids. Um, yeah, the, the title of my talk, it's, title of my talk, maybe I should plug the audio cord in. Is it recording, like, do we need to wait for that or is it just like streaming? I don't actually care. I don't really want this on the internet. I'm a very private person. Um, so the title of my talk is entitled um, Suckless Software for Everyone. And the subtitle was too big to put on this, but uh, does anyone have the, the program? What does it say? It's like, it's like even you can LARP as a good programmer. Um, and, and yeah, and that's exactly what it is. Um, so who knows what Suckless Software is? Anyone have any clue? Several people? Okay. Not as many as I thought. Um, so, Suckless Software is, um, which you can go ahead and pull up on your laptop, suckless.org, if you want to be distracted during the duration of this talk. It's actually not that attractive of a website, but you can do that. Um, so, Suckless is a, kind of a, a cabal of programmers. Um, I'm not going to go into the biographical data of them. Like, I don't really know them. I'm not personally involved with them. Uh, most of them are actually in Europe or Germany or, or something like that. Um, but the idea behind it is that like modern software has definitely gone wrong, um, and that's actually something that like everyone agrees with. Uh, it's just an issue of like what's your take on. Does this look ridiculous on my head? Would you look fine? It looks like a TED talk. <sighs> no. Okay. So suckless software. The the idea behind suckless software is um, you know when you're looking at software nowadays, you can kind of group it or not necessarily in groups, but put it on a scale from like, let's say more like small scale Unix programs that work like using the Unix philosophy, which I'll explain in a second for the people who don't know what that is. Um, and on the other side, you have like enterprise software, right? Um, so uh, I'm going to skip that. Let's skip to the picture. Okay. So here's a picture. So this is like Microsoft Word. This is what, this is like the quintessence of enterprise software. Um, so when I mean like enterprise software, I'm talking about software. Usually it's, it's created by a corporation. It's a, a massive program that tries to do absolutely everything. Um, it's, it's like a less cool version. Like every enterprise software is like a less cool, cool version of Emacs. Like it tries to like just have everything built into it and it does it terribly. So here, you know, Microsoft Word, here are all the toolbars and all the different features and all the crazy stuff built into it. Half of it is buggy. And worst of all, since it's run by a corporate, well, firstly, to manage a software project this big, you basically need a massive corporation, right? Because you have so many people working on it, so many bugs that can go wrong. 
and also because of that, um, there's a kind of like there's a sense in which like it's going to change over the years. So Microsoft Word is the most like infuriating thing because it, like every five years it's like totally different and like you know it's just you're just going to have to use. I haven't used it since around 2004, so I have no clue what it is now. You probably have to like I don't know, uh, I don't know, have cut off your hand and like put blood in it to get it to work nowadays because I have no clue. I have no clue. Um, so on, on one side, you have kind of like enterprise, like massive monolithic software um, that tries to basically do everything that a person can possibly want. And if a, a end user complains about a feature not existing in this program, the modus operandi is like, oh, we, we better add it. There's, there's nothing keeping you from like increasing the size of your software. And that means increasing complexity and stuff like that. Okay. So that's on the bad side of the scale. Or I don't know, maybe there are justifiable uses for it. Maybe I'll talk about it. I probably won't because I have a lot of stuff to talk about. But um, on the other side, there's, you know, what, what I said, kind of a, a Unix-like kind of computing. So the idea behind, you know, the Unix operating system, or really the rationalization for why it's so, like, user unfriendly, <laughs> um, or, you know, maybe programmer unfriendly, is the fact that, like, Unix, Unix programs are de designed deliberately to, in themselves, like, do something that's computationally simple, um, and is kind of by itself useless, right? So when you think of a program like grep, Okay, I don't know, let's ask the audience. I assume most people know what grep is, right? Okay, great. For those who don't, though, grep is a super simple, you know, command line program, right? You just give it an argument, uh, like let's say something you want to search for in a text file, and grep just searches for that sequence in, and returns you all the lines that have that in the file. By itself, that's kind of useless, but you can chain that in a script to get like very useful things, right? Um, and all Unix programs kind of work in that way, where individually they're all kind of useless. But if you plug them in together, they're actually extremely. The, the buzzword, of course, is extensibility, right? You want to be able to you have these programs that you can combine in creative ways, and you get a lot of functionality out of them, right? So that's that's kind of the Unix way. Now, the Unix way, obviously, you know, the the reason we've fallen from grace, kind of, is the Unix way is like kind of hard. Oh, maybe I should, sorry, maybe, maybe I should be visible by the camera there. Hello there, uh, people watching at home. Um, so the, the Unix way is obviously a, a little more difficult to, to get people into. Um, now, I'm not saying that everyone in the universe should be using programs like grep and set and awk and stuff like that. But what I mean is, um, the end user, the actual normies who are using like software, they might have a very nice uh, user experience, user interface, and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of times, there's a tendency at the programmer level to create programs that are just way, way beyond the comprehension of an individual person, and that that's kind of become a problem. That's kind of like most, uh, probably most of a lot of your jobs is like fixing problems, figuring out someone else's code that is like very big and kind of a pain and you know and, and I'm very worried about dying not because of myself but the sense that man there are all these projects that like no one's gonna know how to maintain you know it's just it's sad um, they're just gonna pass into the ether um, so the suckless so I'm, I'm actually gonna pull up on my computer uh, suckless.org uh, which I can't see because I didn't mirror my displays but I'm gonna type it in no let's let's be smart and mirror my displays uh, which I can't even see that multi-monitor uh, yes okay um, okay, so I'm going to go to suckless.org. And um, so Suckless actually create, um, they have a whole bunch of software. It, really, they're creating all the, really, we're not logged on. Okay, kids. Um, it says I'm logged on. This is a lie. Let me just ping something. Why, why is it? Maybe they just don't have HTTPS. They did like five seconds ago. That's weird. Um, anyway, yeah, that's how old school they are. Um, so Suckless, um, let me go. So you can go ahead and look at the about, or let's say the philosophy, okay. So the idea behind it is creating kind of an, an environment of simple software that by itself, uh, now this is targeted not necessarily to normal people, it's targeted more to like people like you or power users. Um, now a lot of the software that you probably already use um, uses some kind of suckless stuff or is inspired by it. So for example, the window manager that I'm running not right now, you may know is DWM. Okay, so this is a tiling window manager um, that is actually originally a suckless piece of software. A lot of other software, I want to say awesome uh, window manager is a, a fork of it uh, and a bunch of other stuff. I don't, I don't think i3 is. i3 is kind of in the same family. I don't think it's directly forked from uh, DWM. Um, but um, so the, the idea behind it, one of my favorite things, actually I have it in the... Um, 
What order do I want to say all the stuff I want to say? Uh, I'll just say the order of the slides. I apologize, this is a little, um, I got a lot of stuff. So uh, the suckless mindset is, is kind of um, uh, looking for, I, I'll, I'll just say I'm the kind of person, if there's a minor bug or a minor like uh, unexpected problem in a, uh, a piece of software, oftentimes like a, a lot of bug fixes that are kind of ad hoc, they just bring a level of complexity that's unnecessary, right? Um, or adding in features that aren't necessarily required. So I, I, I think suckless software is governed partially by the philosophy that um, lacking of feature is better than a bugged feature, or especially a feature that people don't know how to, to add in or, or to, to manage. And also simplicity breeds good Unix habits. And now although this is esoteric, because I'm, I haven't shown you how all this works, so I'm going to in a second. Uh, we already did that. Uh, one of my favorite lines actually from Suckless's uh, website, which I think is like so funny, I was gonna pull it up, but it's too hard. Um, but it says, uh, talking about DWM, the window manager, it says, because DWM is customized through editing its source code, it's pointless to make binary packages of it. This keeps the user base small and elitist. No novices asking stupid questions. Um, there are some distributions that provide binary packages, though. So th that's our goal here. We want to be small and elitist like uh, Suckless. Um, okay, so some software that they've made. Uh, ST is a termi terminal emulator. DWM, as I said, a window manager. Uh, Dmenu, I'm going to show you what that is. It's the greatest program ever written. Um, one of the most powerful things ever. A lot of you may have used it as like a uh, application launcher. Um, which it's used for that, but it does like a million bajillion things like every other script on my computer actually uses DW or uh, D menu to do stuff and actually sent I'll talk about that as well. That's actually the thing I'm doing this presentation in. Um, and anyway, so uh, some weird things about suckless software are like kind of how this this mindset affects like how how it's used. Um, so software is maximally minimal. Obviously, that's an oxymoron, but there's a sense in which you do not ab you absolutely do not put a feature in a program unless you're sure that it's basically universally desired. Um, so a good example is ST, the the terminal. It actually does not even come with the, what you think of a basic feature as the ability to scroll back in the terminal. Okay, that's that might sound like a totally weird thing. It's a good example of this, but the the idea idea is like there are many use cases where you don't actually want a terminal emulator to have that ability like if you're using if you're habitually using like tmux or something like that it might be good not to have that now most people probably do want that feature um, so what, what you do do is you patch in features uh, that you want uh, from the website I'll show you what that is and some and we'll do this ourselves it sound com sounds complicated it's the easiest thing in the world and simple programs interact to create uh, superpowers Okay, so let's talk about, let's just use, uh, have an example of this. So you can go to st.suckless.org, um, and that is the website of the uh, terminal emulator, st.suckless.org. Um, so what I'm going to do, actually I already did it, but whatever, that's where you get it. I'm going to download the source code, which I already put in uh, suckless.st. Okay, and let me just clean that just in case I did anything. So if you do that, and also I'm going to get rid of, oh, actually, no, screw that. I'm going to re-download that. What's the mm, clone? OK. So by default, now I'm actually, the terminal I'm running here is actually ST, but it's my version that has some stuff uh, um, added onto it. So I'm going to go ahead and clone that repository. Don't need two of those. Um, and we're going to build and install it. OK, so downloading ST. And we're just going to, I'm just going to lazily sudo make install it. OK, now it's installed. Um, now it's installed. So that uh, momentary thing, that was you compiling your terminal emulator. Um, now if I open up a new window, you'll see this is actually what ST looks like by default. And it's kind of, um, the key bindings are different. I forget how to like increase the um, t size by default. I have a different binding. But you see, it's like kind of ugly looking. Like it's, it has like tr traditional terminal colorings. And as I said, like there's no way, let's say I do a command, let's say pacman q and list all my programs. There's no way for me to, to like scroll up and stuff like that. Um, now that is not how a person wants a terminal by default. But if you go to Suckless's site, here's how it works. Um, they have patches on the side here, and you can very easily add stuff into it. So this is how simple it is. So let's say, for example, um, I want, I don't like the colors. Okay, so I'm going to put in, um, I think the one that I have is grub box colors. Uh, well, actually, but even before that, let's talk about how the source code actually works here. So if you look at this directory, um, 
one of the organizing uh, features of Suckless. Now it might sound weird. Okay, this is like it's a program, and I'm editing. I'm editing the source code directly to modify it. That sounds like really arbitrary and weird. But thankfully, due to how Suckless organizes things, this is actually way simpler than than it sounds. Um, so specifically, definitions like variables and stuff like that, it's actually kept in a different file called uh, config.def.h, which is actually uh, copied over to config.h. So if you if you open one of those. Um, you'll actually see a lot of the, the kind of default variables. So for example, it defines a font here, okay? Uh, it defines like the, the border pixels and stuff like this. Now the config.h file amounts to a kind of config file, okay? Now it doesn't, now it's not refreshed every time you create the program, but it's refreshed every time you compile it, every time you sudo make install it, right? Um, uh, so you're not, when you open the program, it's not actually reading this file on your computer. It's, it's already compiled and it's gonna use this, right? Um, so it's relative, you could scroll down this and see all the features that are put in there by default. Uh, you'll also notice, I think there is a color. Uh, yeah, so um, there are like color names um, for what you want colors to do. Um, but anyway, let's, so let's add in a patch. Let's add in this like grub box thing to change the default color. Um, and I'm gonna get the grub box dark. I'm just gonna copy that link. Let me actually make this bigger for later. Um, and I'm gonna go into this, a folder, let's use the one that you can actually see, and I'm gonna download that patch file. Uh, and this is a diff file, I assume, like most of you like know how diffs work, but if we open it up, okay, we're gonna say, uh, what is it, st, grovebox. Okay, so a diff file, all it is is just instructions for the, the command patch to look for uh, some sequences in the original file and replace them with some other stuff. So in this case, you know, we're gonna f look for where it uh, defines these colors and it's gonna replace these with other colors. That's all it is, right? Um, so how to uh, patch that in, we, we just do patch and then um, open doohicker, angle bracket, whatever you call it, who cares? I don't know. What a British, don't British people have a funny name for it? Like a, I don't know. Oh, less, you know, I don't know. The thing is, I always have to, whenever, to say like less than or greater than, I always have to think about it, you know? And also I feel like it's a different thing. It's kind of like in dashes and in dashes and hyphens and all that crap. Anyway, so you just do this. So you can say less than or great, wait. Yeah, it is less than. Um, and what that will do, it's, it just says patching config uh, def.h. I'm actually going to delete the um, other config file it created because that actually overrides it. Um, and then if we sudo make install it, Again, sudo make install. Wow, hacker magic. Uh, then we can pull up another window here and you see that it's a different color. Okay, so that, that's a permanent change that's, that's just stuck in your thing. And of course, you can go in and you can change those files, uh, those colors manually. Let's add some more stuff. Let's add, um, actually I wanna see, what's the default, like make it bigger. Uh, zoom, is in there. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, control shift and page up, page down, okay. I changed my binds to be like more Vimish. Um, okay, so anyway, which, and of course all the bindings you can change in config.h as well. So let's add some other stuff. Let's say alpha, that's for transparency, right? You can just see all these patches on the side. This is stuff just submitted by random people who are kind of hacking on this and like add little changes. And a lot of them are like super small. So just as a, an example, we'll just take uh, whatever the recent alpha patch is. Uh, we'll copy that and download it here, and then we'll just patch it in. Patch, st, alpha, bang. Um, so notice also, if you don't know anything about patch as a program, you'll see that it says like, oh, it succeeded, but it's also offset by 16 lines. Um, and the, what that usually is, is like the, 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 the diff file was made for either slightly different source code or other patches you put in have moved text down, like let's say 16 lines. So it's just warning you, oh, these, um, these lines aren't exactly where they originally are. They're, they're moved in a different location. But unless it says failed, if it says, oh, it's failed, then you have to go in and change it manually. But most of the time it's gonna, it's gonna work out fine. So let's pseudo make install this new uh, version of ST. Uh, oh yeah, we gotta, hold on got to get rid of the or new uh, config file because it actually uses new variables in config. Um, okay, then we can create a new one. Oh, bang, look at that. Wow, amazing. It's like, um, it's transparent now. Okay, so you can do that. Uh, you could do this ad nauseum, uh, add a bunch of features. I'm not going to um, belabor that point. You can add and scroll back the thing I just mentioned about. But now I'm really going to talk about the kind of things you can do with this kind of software uh, now that we've gotten over kind of the, the boring part. Um, okay. 
so some kind of stuff that uh, I've added into my ST build, and you can get the patches or, or anything else, just kind of examples. Um, one of the things, now obviously it's kind of annoying to like have to change, like patch in colors, especially, anyone use like wall or pie wall? Anyone know that kind of stuff? Yeah, it's, it's a kind of cool program where like you can give it an image and it uses some kind of, uh, I, I don't exactly, I guess it uses Python, but it like takes the colors of that image, finds like 16 colors to use as a color theme automatically, and then updates all of your programs to use those colors, right? Um, which is, it's kind of cool. Um, either way, you can actually patch that ability uh, into ST with, you can, oops. You can pass, patch in stuff into X resources uh, or an X resources patch that can use that. So that's an example of something that I have. So instead of like, if I want to change colors or even some other variables in ST without recompiling, I can, I can actually just use X resources to do that um, if people are familiar with that. One of my favorite things in ST is actually external pipe. This is like absolutely overpowered uh, in terms of how like useful it is. Uh, let me, uh, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna change back to my own build of ST because I want, it, I want my precious key bindings back. Okay, um, so here's an example. I have a file here that's fake email, okay? Um, so one annoying thing in like terminals, especially for people like me who are snobs and I hate using mou mice, mouses, whatever you want to call them, uh, I just hate them. Um, so uh, one thing that's very nice about um, this little patch in ST called external pipe is what it does is it takes all the content on the screen or sometimes previous content from your terminal and you can pipe it to any external program that you like. And this, as I said before, this is actually the point of suckless software. We'll get into it more with uh, dmenu. But the, the idea behind this is um, you, you, are, you can build extensibility into your programs. And this is a good example of this. So in this fake email, I have uh, some uh, URLs. In, they're just plain text URLs. Um, but what I have in ST is I have this little thing, uh, a key binding that I have set to alt L. Um, where um, it takes all the content on the terminal, wherever it is, pipes it to a script that actually looks for URLs and then gives you a menu of them to follow. So I can do Alt-L, I get a little list up here, and what it's done, you, you can't see because it's a little small here, but there are three URLs here. There's my website, there's my GitHub, and then there's Suckless's website. Um, and it's given me a menu of the three of them for me to follow. So let's say I want to go to, I don't know, my GitHub or something like that. Um, so that's going to pull up um, the link, so here's that. Um, very nice, or, or that's uh, or at least my dot files. Um, so that's how that works, and it's a good way of like following links uh, without having to use a mouse or anything else. Uh, another command that I actually really like is um, and another use of external pipe. One thing I really hate is sometimes you run a command, especially one you can't rerun, and you need to copy like massive amounts of text from it. Um, there's a similar thing. Let's say, for example, I just you know do Pacman Q lists out all of my programs. I have a similar binding that actually takes all the command, like lists out your previous commands. I have it to Alt O, and you'll see, you, you, you won't see because it's so small, but I'll tell you what it is. It actually lists out all the commands that I've run in this terminal and allows you to choose one. Let's say this Pac-Man queue that I just ran. Now what I've done is I've actually copied to my clipboard all the content of that command. So I can paste it wherever I want. So if you want to like troubleshoot things or if you need like to log something in some way, it's a good way of just copying stuff um, off your terminal. And that, that kind of highlights the extensibility. Like external pipe is this like great feature that um, ST, you know, you can easily add into ST. Uh, where did the do hicker go? Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, I have things for like copying URLs or, or following them or stuff like that. Um, so now this is actually this, you know, Escher painting here. We're drawing hands. Uh, no, let's actually step out of the matrix and you'll actually see uh, I'm actually using a piece of Suckless software to make this presentation. And a typical Suckless style, oh spoilers, but this thing on the right is actually my entire presentation. Um, so Suckless has this awesome program called Scent. And what it does is it takes a plain text input um, like my presentation is not like a PowerPoint file, it's nothing else other than a text file. So this is literally it. And what it does is it takes everything you format as a paragraph, it's treating that as a slide. So for example, my first little paragraph here is Suckless Software for Everyone, and you'll see that's my first slide, right? And what this program does is it actually automatically sizes and formats everything so it fits the slide in the optimal way. So for example, if you have a whole lot of text or a little bit of text, it will size it to the right. Uh, direction. And you also see I do have images, right? And that is, oops, 
Um, and that is just you put at and then the, the link to the image or the, the URL, not URL, you know, file location, right? Um, so this is a pretty good example. It, like once I started using Scent for presentations, I could never go back because it's just so easy. Because I mean, you know, I, as most of you guys know who I was talking to, like I was literally, I made this presentation like two hours ago. It's just, it, my notes for the presentation are the presentation. You know what I mean? It, it's that easy. Uh, yes? Oh, I mean, this, this right here is an image on my computer, oh. right? Yeah, yeah, so that, that's what I mean. No, 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 uh, sorry. I said URL, I meant file location. So it was just on your computer. Yeah, you can't do it for, you, although you could easily build, you know, the Suckless Sense somehow drawing from web images if you really wanted to. I don't know why you want to do that, but. Um, so yeah, I, I actually do my presentations in this and I have for quite a while. It's just super easy. Like you just kind of scribble together their notes and like they automatically format themselves. Now, of course it's limited in Suckless style. Like, you know, it doesn't have like Pango formatting. Oh, that actually might not be difficult to add in if you want like bold and italic and stuff like that, but by default, it gives you basically this optimal, um, you, you know, presentation scheme. So that is our um, MC Escher, like hands drawing. It's a, that's us looking at how this presentation was made, right? Um, so it's very, and that that's kind of the mindset. Um, like take simple text input uh, and extensibility, and you can have like a relatively complex alternative. I definitely prefer this to making like PowerPoints or Beamer presentations or anything like that. Um, so now this is really the reason I wanted to do this presentation, and it's the greatest program of all time called DMenu. Okay, um, so a lot, a lot of like window managers actually use DMenu as a, a file uh, launcher or whatever. So you know, in my case, you'll see DMenu is up at the top. Like, let's say I type in, I don't even know what. Uh, it's an important program on a c I can run. I don't know. Let's type in zero AD because we're all going to be gaming with that later today, right, guys? Land party. Um, so it, it can work as an application launcher, launcher, but who cares about that? Let's talk about the interesting stuff. So what dmenu actually does um, is, let's say, let's say we just echo some content. Let's say, uh, let's have some names. Let's say Luke. Let's say, uh, I don't know, Miles, uh, Billy. Billy's the guy when I used to teach at university. That Billy was always the example guy, and his girlfriend Amanda. Okay. So what you can do is you can tag, you can cat a file, or you can uh, echo any con any kind of content into D menu, and what that will do um, is you. Mm, yeah, you can't see it at the top, but what it's done is it's given me a menu that says Luke, Miles, Billy, and Amanda, and I can start typing in. Let's say A M, or yeah, Amanda, and it will pop out. Right. So. Very convenient. Um, or, uh, so uh, anyway, all D menu actually does is it takes text input, it gives it to the user as a menu, and they select what they want. Now, that sounds like the simplest thing in the universe, but it's the most extensible and most useful thing in the universe. Okay, so uh, just right off the bat, um, one thing that I, I originally started using this for is actually like emoji insertion, and which is a highly important thing in today's society, um, because like there's no good way of like typing emojis. You know what I mean? And the annoying thing is, and this is, this is the example of enterprise crap software. This is actually the greatest example because. Um, like every program on your phone and your computer wants to have their own way. Oh, we kids love emojis. We have to have like emoji insertion in our programs. So your browser has a way of putting in emojis. You're like, uh, you know, on your phone, you're like messaging, your text messaging app has one and your, you know, my matrix, uh, text messaging thing has one. They all have a different thing and it's so stupid. It's one, it's one computation. It should be done by the same program, right? So on the, I don't have a solution on the phone cause I, I don't run custom software software on my phone, but on a desktop, it's super, it's easiest thing in the universe. So one day I was bored. I literally just went to B Wikipedia and did some copying and pasting. Uh, where did I put that stupid file? So I really just copied all the emojis and put them in a giant file. So now what I can do, what, what, you might say, what's the point of that? I'm not, I'm, you're not, you're going to open the, the file and copy stuff from it? No, I'm going to make dmenu do the work for me. So I actually have a, let's say I want to type an emoji. Um, here is here is a uh, smile, uh, smiley with sunglasses, okay? Um, and then I have a binding on my uh, window manager that is basically like insert an emoji. So now I have a, what it does is it cats that file to D menu, gives me a list of them, so I can search sunglasses. Bang, there it is, okay? 
So now I can do something like relatively complex. And the important thing is I'm not just inserting an emoji. I'm doing it in a computationally simple way that can work on every program. So this works in my browser, this works in my email client, it works in everything. That's kind of the point. That's kind of the, you know, do one thing and do, do it well, the, the kind of Unix philosophy. Um, additionally, I, I use this for every, um, like al almost everything. Um, uh, another thing is like, uh, like snippets, and I don't mean for code snippets, like there's some like URLs or long things that I like just don't like having to write. Um, so for example, I actually have a link to a file of crap like this where, um, so for example, I have a file where I have URLs that I constantly write. So a bunch of my websites or like uh, GitHub repositories or even weird things. I have uh, my like credit card referral links, which I occasionally need. Uh, and even like Bitcoin public addresses and stuff like that. Um, so why do I have that? Well, I actually have a binding on my computer that cats that file where I can save what is in, this is in essence a bookmark. I can cat that file into D menu I can get a choice of it, and then dmenu can run, uh, let's, let's actually do it, it's one line of code, quote unquote code. I don't even consider like shell scripting code. It just seems wrong. It just seems, I don't know, it's like calling HTML a language, you know, it doesn't make sense. Um, but let's say we can cat the snippet file into dmenu, and I'm gonna give it some options, I for case insensitive, and 30 to give it to a list of 30 elements visually, but that actually doesn't matter. So I can get a list of all the URLs here, but I can go even further and I can say xdo tool, and this is what I do in my binding, I can xdo tool type um, the content of that, uh, uh, that command, right? So what that means is if this, uh, this line runs in a browser, it will type that stuff in in the URL bar for me, right? So do I have like, um, you know, do, do I ever have like uh, browser bookmarks? No, I don't. I actually just have a text file on my computer because that file is my browser bookmarks. It's also like just things that I don't use for a URL, just like, again, like Bitcoin public keys that like I just need to send to someone or something. It's way more convenient. Um, so, that, you know, it's one of those things where like uh, it, it solves a lot of problems doing something that is lit quite literally one line of shell. Um, another thing is, does anyone have a USB drive right now? Can I use it? I'm not, I won't touch it. Does anyone have an encrypted USB drive? Wow, you guys are disappointing me. Oh, oh you do. Okay, hold on. Okay, I won't ask for your password or anything. Just, you don't have a... So now is your chance to actually like hack my computer in some way that I don't understand. Um, Wait, who had, you, you did, okay. So another thing I have, you know, I have this little thing, uh, with, this is just recycled YouTube content, kids. Um, that's what you're here for. Um, so this is a weird question. Who knows who I am? Raise your hand if you know me. Okay, thank you. That's all I need to know. Um, so I have another thing that what it basically does is searches, this is gonna work eventually, kids. Okay. Um, oops. Uh, what, where are we in time? Great, only 30 minutes in. I, I'm uh, actually about done. Um, so another thing I have is, you know, you can do LSBLK to get a list of, what is all this you have on this drive? Okay, <laughs> that's interesting, okay. Um, okay, that's some OPSEC that I don't understand. <laughs> Either way, so I have the script that actually takes the output of like a LSBLK when you're looking at drives and actually gives you a menu of like, oh, which one of these million fake partitions that this guy randomly put on it? I don't understand that. Um, but if I wanted to mount one of those, I could, right? So good example. Um, and including, uh, I don't know this guy's password to his encrypted partition, but I could actually mount that. If I knew it, it would actually give me a menu, uh, all that kind of stuff, and I could type it in. And all this stuff is D-menu stuff. So it sounds like I'm right, when I, when I, the subtitle of this program, or the subtitle of this talk is, is true to form because it sounds like that's something difficult to do. But this is really just cr uh, script kitty stuff. Um, it's the kind of stuff that anyone could do if you j just know a little bit of shell scripting. Um, and you can take like really simple things that are computationally simple and using D menu or something else, you can really make it, uh, make it seem like it's something, I don't know, puff it up to some, well, I don't want to say puff it up. You're actually making something that's very useful. Um, but anyway, um, what was I saying? Who cares? Um, what else? What else? Uh, oh yeah, one of my fun things. One of the most useful things that I need 
day in, day out is like a Doppler radar. I just love Doppler radars. Uh, so I actually have that as well uh, in my like status bar. This is a script using dmenu that actually just at, inputs like a, a list of different of, of publicly available Doppler radars across the globe. So we're kind of in the southeast now. So let's use the US southeast one. Oh, and it just brings it up. I don't have to log on to weather.com and look at their stupid ads to see if rain is coming. I can just look at the pretty picture. And th that is what's brought to you by dmenu and suckless software, kids. Um, tell your parents about it. Um, oh yeah, tutorial vids. Yeah, I have another thing. Um, uh, who cares? Uh, oh, w one of last thing, call. One of my favorite things is, has anyone ever used like XMPP to like call people, like to get a phone number over XMPP? Okay, that's cool, yeah, yeah. So one of my favorite things is like, I, uh, um, you can have like a, I have a book to like keep uh, people's addresses in. It's like a kind of, uh, TUI address book, and it can also output like information, uh, output people's phone numbers to scripts and stuff like that, which sounds kind of weird, like when would you ever use that? But one script that I have, I'm not going to pull it up because it would dox literally everyone I know, um, but like it actually gives, you, gives me a menu of everyone in my address book with their phone number, and I can select them, and then I, can, I get that, um, it will basically make a call to them over XMPP because I have an XMPP phone number. So if I lose my phone and I need to call Billy or Miles or something, uh, I can call them up. Well, I can't call Billy up. He doesn't exist, but Miles does, um, which I, I did see your text earlier. I, I'm not carrying my phone around, but I went to the, I went, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, last thing, you know, I'm going to give an honorable mention to some dude because um, he opened a pull request on my GitHub thing that I probably won't merge because I'm, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a nice thing, but I just don't like adding random scripts to my, I don't know, anyway. But this is really cool. Um, uh, this is just an example of the kind of stuff you can do with dmenu. He actually made his look prettier than his because he probably has taste and I don't. I just like, I like things in the default colors kind of. Um, but you probably won't be able to read this, but this is like him browsing YouTube channels using dmenu, where he just, it's like a 300 line script. It's, it's probably a little more complicated than it needs to be, but he's searching by topics uh, and like uh, names in like, I guess his YouTube sub subscription lists. And it's just using dmenu and jq and stuff like that. Um, so he's gonna select some stuff. Maybe he's gonna, oh, he's gonna select me. Oh wow, yeah, he's selected me. Um, What's he, what's he gonna pick? How kids cartoons uh, brainwash the generation. Yeah, that's a good one. So, um, so he, he's like actually watching like a YouTube video in, uh, man, I look so weird in that, uh, it's so uncomfortable. Let's get rid of that. Um, I just hate, it's one of those things, you know, the first time you hear your own voice, the first time you see yourself like in a, I don't know, like on a screen, it's just uncomfortable. You, I don't know, maybe some, some of you guys know. Um, so anyway, that, that's the gist of it. Uh, and when I say the gist of it, that's the last slide I made because, you know, I was doing this super late. Uh, but hopefully that gives you an idea of the kind of things. Um, you know, a lot of people, as I said at the beginning, you know, there's this idea that, like, um, uh, suck, especially with suckless software, that it's there just to, like, oh, it's so complicated and it's elitist. They did describe themselves as elitist. Um, but in, in reality, I've, I've been using this kind of stuff for, like, I don't know, five years or stuff. And, it, it, and it's absolutely fantastic just because even though there's a little hurdle in figuring how things uh, you know work and how thing you know getting a good initial build of a lot of this stuff uh, at this point I use it I, I, I could never go to anything else just because the ability for you to like jump to new just write a crazy script that does this that or the other is just so useful and I, I would never uh, give that away so this is not the kind of stuff that your grandma's going to use um, but it is the kind of stuff that potentially you might be interested in and it makes my life a whole lot more uh, I, I guess efficient, and I don't have to worry about, I don't know, computers. I actually really hate computers. I don't know if you know that. But um, that concludes my talk. So thank you for coming. So who, who wants to uh, carry the, the question mic around? Anyone? Anyone do the? Uh, you want to do it? OK. Yeah, let me turn it on. Okay. Does this one actually? OK, this one works. Yeah, I turned There's it one on. another room that didn't. OK. Question. Oh, no one has a question. Oh, there we go. Okie dokie. So, I would really like to know, in your opinion, why exactly does all of this suck less, and what does it suck less than? What does it suck less what? What, what does it suck less than? Oh, well, I, I think, software? as I said kind of at the beginning, the idea is like, all the rest of the software in the world, is, I mean, if there's no 
principled opposition to like software feature bloat and software bloat. We are more and more moving to a sucky future where just everything has to be run by committee. Everything has to be kind of like this massive, uh, I don't know, like uh, kind of beast software that like is just hard for people to manage. And su suckless, of course, again, it's not for average people, um, but it's the kind of stuff for programmers. And again, like to, to be clear, like maybe you've never when I even when I open that like config.h file, maybe you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know any of this stuff. Dude, I, I, I don't put I know C on my resume because I functionally don't. don't. Um, it's just easy to get in here for like kind of a, an informed power user and modify it in a way that gets you so much more than you would expect from just modifying a dot file or something like that. Um, so it, I would just say it avoids headaches. Um, it, like once you get over, oh, you know, the idea of how it works, you avoid a lot of headaches down the road. You know, that that's what I would say. I mean, it's kind of like Linux, right? <laughs> okay, I may be off base, but it seems to me, even having looked at Suckless software a long time ago, they use a different C library, don't they? Um, I think uh, I, I think there's an option of that in some of their software. I I don't. Um, I know they're opinionated about some of it, but so far as I know. Um, I, I don't know, maybe someone can correct me, but that's like something optional. They oh, should, okay. they, they, they're, they're opinionated about a lot. Again, like I don't, I wouldn't say I know C, like I don't know that much about it or the politics of it, um, but they are very uh, snobby about some of their, not, not just how code is, but the libraries they use, but I can't tell you for sure. Um, they, they, yeah. Um, Could you please repeat that in the... Uh, Oh, he just asked if package managers are, would be useful or, or not, basically. And basically, no. Um, so there is some suckless software that's packaged in uh, normal Linux repositories. Um, but like to use it ideally, you kind of want to do it yourself. Um, there and like some software basically works out of the box. Like DWM has most of the functionality you want. ST for some people, even out of the box, might be you know fine. Um, but if you are you know for you know I'm an Arch user or at least an Artix Linux user, and um, there are, uh, the, in the AUR and other places there will be different builds of suckless software that have like kind of sensible defaults. Um, but ideally, it's something you do yourself. And um, that can actually be like a pretty simple process as well. Like, I mean, I, a lot of times I actually have mine where if I modify the config.h, it it, Vim will automatically recompile the program for me. So it almost feels like I'm using a config file. But um, yeah, yeah, you, you wouldn't really package this stuff in package managers for the most part. <laughs> Um, have, have you tried this at all on uh, like a Pine phone or anything like that? Like uh, any of the suckless software on like a Pine phone? Uh, no, I, I don't like phones. I hate phones so much that like using them at all is just like a f the frustrating endeavor. So I, uh, I wouldn't be able to, I'm sure people have done it, but I don't know anything about it, so. Okay, uh. I mean, because the experience would be kind of almost like the laptop oh, yeah. experience, oh, with yeah. the exception of you get access to like a modem and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Um, and, you know, as I said, too, like, with the little optimizations, like, I mean, you know, I mentioned, like, emoji insertion and stuff like that. Have, being able to have, like, extensibility on the phone is also something we're, like, sorely lacking. Um, so that would be nice as well. What's your, um, I guess, workflow management? So switching from computer to computer so you can keep track of, I guess, all your configs? Um, just well, I mean, they're not even configs. They're, I just have a build of them that, like, I'll download um, and install. And, like, suckless software, like, because, uh, because it's so simple, um, it's not the kind of thing where, like, you need to, I mean, maybe every year or two I might see, oh, is there a big update to this software that I can pull? But for the most part, like, I don't really change it. I, I just kind of keep it how it is. And um, I'm also kind of a one computer guy. Uh, I, I technically have more than one computer, but I really just use one, so it's not, it's less of an issue for me, but, you know, this, this is me. Are there other stockless tools you use worth mentioning? Um, I can say ones I don't like. Uh, I don't like, they have a browser called Surf, which um, actually, ha the, you can do a bunch of the same kind of extensible stuff in it, but um, that's not, it's not really their fault. It's just like, it's so hard to have a browser nowadays. You basically just have to be Google, like Chromium or, or something like that. Um, so uh, I'm trying to think other, other things off the top. Is there, is there something I should say that, like a suckless software that people like? Um, 
I just talked about the, like, the big, kind of the big four. Um, but Suckless also tries to do things like make core utilities and stuff, but I'm less familiar with that. Um, yeah, who's, oh yeah. Yeah, uh, sorry, so I had a, a couple comments on some of the other questions, yeah. and then I had an actual question, so I'm gonna be annoying. Um, but about the libc, uh, Suckless prefers the muscle libc over glibc because it's the same concept of like trying to trim the fat, but as long as they provide the same ABI, it, it should be fine. Um, yeah, you can com compile with either one and it, it should be fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, for the package manager, this is actually a big shout out to Gentoo. Because Gentoo builds everything from source, right, right. you can use the save config use flag and you oh. can point it to your config.h and then whenever you change it, it'll rebuild really? Suckless automatically. That's interesting. Yeah. And then my okay. question, Maybe sorry. Maybe I use Gentoo. <laughs> yeah. A big plug That's for cool. Gentoo. Um, uh, oh, my question. Yeah. Uh, does this, uh, does it matter whether you use X or Wayland? And if it, if this stuff won't run on Wayland, uh, are there alternatives? Like I know there's Rofi versus Dmenu, yeah. and other stuff like that. Um, so I think that, okay, there's definitely a build, a, a, not DWM, but DWL or something that's just a Wayland fork of it. Um, I, I would use that myself, but you know, I've added so much to my DWM, I'd have to go through and, okay, I gotta add this to Wayland, and there might be some stuff that I don't know how it works. Dmenu, I'm not entirely sure. Um, you can check their site because I know for a fact they have like a list of some of the other like more obscure projects. But by default, they're on they're on X. But I don't think it's because they. I think it's because people use it. I don't think it's because you know they have an emotional attachment for them. I have to say, I love seeing a Red Hat developer recommending Gentoo. Uh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just a, a quick question, and this is more of a, I guess, philosophical one on yeah. how do you think uh, we should help people get away from enterprise software or software that does suck? Um, because, um, like, your, your typical users, you know, once they get stuck in a particular um, use case, it's hard to get them yeah. to, to move, right? Um, that's a that's a good question, and that kind of presupposes that like I'm really evangelical about this. I think the nice thing about Suckless is that like it's not about like telling people oh everyone should use this. It's not for everyone. It might be for most people in this room, mind you. Um, but like it's not it's not about like getting everyone. I would say the nice thing about it is I don't have to worry about software below using this kind of stuff. Um, so it it I'm solving the problem for me. Uh, I don't know about. And you know, I'm doing the most I can in terms of like this stuff is easier to use and get into it, and you know, evangelizing in that sense. Um, but I guess that it's just like I don't. Th I think the same way about Linux. Like I, Linux is really useful, and I use it, and I think everyone should use it. But people have a lot of hang-ups about you know what they're using, and like there are a lot of in there's institutional momentum behind enterprise and proprietary software, obviously. Um, so that's a trickier thing. Uh, to overcome, and I don't know the the option other than like show people the kind of stuff you can do, and uh, I don't know, do it and have fun, you know. Where's the mic now? Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so I, I like the idea of the um, extensibility, especially with the able, ability to pipe things in and out. That makes a lot of sense to me. It, having to patch and recompile to yeah. like change colors. It yes. seems like the opposite of extensibility. Yeah, yeah, no. Is, is, is this really a, is there really a consistent yeah, well, philosophy or is it just a collection of curmudgeonly Oh, there's uh, definitely opinions. some curmudgeonness in it. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't deny that. But I think it's specifically in the example of colors, like, um, as, as I said, one of the patches that a lot of people added in is the ability to read X resources and stuff like that. Um, I would say, um, uh, wait, what was the other thing you compared it to? The The... Well, having to patch or recompile just doesn't, oh, yeah, yeah. seems like... Well, okay, I would say, like, in real life, uh, once you get kind of a working build, you, you just don't think about it that much. Like, I, I don't know the last time I've ever patched something into my, my thing. It's really something you do when you just start, and you're like, oh, this, these are the features I want, and I'm going to sit with that. And you can do a little tweak later on. Um, and that's, that's why I have X resources to kind of give it that like flexibility if I want to, I, I don't actually even use the X resources patch right now because I, I just use the default colors that I have set there. Um, but I would just say in real life, it's very rare that I actually recompile it. Like it's not a regular thing because uh, I'm just kind of happy with how it is. Um, and if you're, again, if you're like piping and stuff like that to other external programs, there's a sense in which like you don't need to customize a, a program so much. Um, 
I, I don't know how to explain that if, that, if that makes sense. So, like, you know, if I'm modifying, like, the, the script that does emojis or, the, the, you know, reads the external pipe or change the regular expression that finds URLs, a lot of that is in external scripts. So, yes. yeah. Yeah, so that's an example of extensibility. Yes. That makes sense. I, yeah. I'm saying it, it's, it's anti-extensible. Oh, okay. No, no, I understand that. I understand that. That don't seem consistent to me. No, no, no. Okay. No, I totally understand that. Um, it's just... Uh, I think they don't want to have a feature in, as I said, they don't want to have a feature in the build that is not going to be universal, right? So if some people just want to stick with one color scheme and they don't want X resources, it is not going to be added in. Um, I think that's, and you could say it's curmudgeonness. Uh, maybe that's true. Um, I wouldn't, I'm not going to defend, you know, the emotional state of these people. I don't know. Could be. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's how it is. Yeah, okay, so it's just prioritizing small code, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, that's a big, uh, I didn't specifically mention it, but yes, that is a massive uh, concern. Um, I wish this screen would not be blue, but. Do you find that it's, uh, using the software, it has influenced your programming style yourself? Um, more like in terms of, it, j it just makes me look at problems in a different way. That's the only thing that I would say, like in terms of, um, you know, as I said at the beginning, it's more like programs, there's nothing wrong with programs not having features um, and like uh, them being built into other structures. Um, I guess that's the only thing I would say. It, ma it makes me more of a Unix extremist, I guess. That's the only thing I can, s I can say. I think we're technically five minutes over. I don't know if oh, that matters. Shoot. Oh, they're, oh, we're going to have the dinner in this room, aren't we? Oh, man, we've got to go. <laughs> we, oh, got, so we, we got 10 minutes till 5 still, so I don't know if we can keep taking oh, questions. Okay. Well, I mean, they're not knocking on the doors, are they? I don't think so. So, oh, yeah. wherever you go. You know, I have the same bag, I think. That's... Hey, I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, first one's a little more serious. So doing this sort of uh, methodology of having software being something that you can craft and adapt, and it's something that they said is like small and elitist and everything, it feels like it's like the antithesis to people trying to like break fragmentation, which I think is funny. Um, I don't know how much it actually matters that like a bunch of people adopt Linux other than they can help build yeah. the community more. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. Like you can just go make your own thing, yeah. do your own thing in your own corner. No one else is going to use it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, th the, the thing about Suckless, it just works so differently than other software because there are a whole bunch of people using it, and we kind of share patches and stuff, but everyone's really using a different build sometimes. I know, I know a lot of people in this room have used my builds for stuff, um, but in general, like, you, you kind of do your own thing. Um, so I would say, like, the, there's a solidarity not in program use or having the same... Uh, exact binaries, but in, in mindset and of what like the programming and you know kind of the the core source code uh, should be and uh, so suckless is like more. I mean, it's definitely true that it causes like fragmentation, but as I said, like it, you know, it's definitely not an evangelical movement that's like oh the whole world should be suckless. It's more like um, I, I think they would like the programming philosophy to be more common in other circles, but the software itself that exists for Suckless, I think is there as an example, kind of a, maybe an extreme example of the kind of s stuff that they want. Uh, and I definitely think that people who are l working on enterprise software or, or just random stuff could definitely integrate principles of extensibility without going to the, the extreme that you know, these kind of software packages uh, are where the, you know, they kind of, they make it just your, your software. Um, Cool, thanks. I took it so far as to altering DWM, I made my own window manager because I didn't oh, yeah. like some of the things it did, like crash when I had two monitors set up. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> my second question was why you're not wearing shoes. I'm just curious. Oh, um, I don't know why. Uh, just why would you wear shoes? There's not, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not a shoes person. I, I usually don't wear shoes. I don't really wear them outside when I'm working at the house either. I just don't, I don't know. I'm very European or something. I don't know. I don't, is it a European thing to not wear shoes? I don't know. Well, you know, like Americans, every, not just Europeans, a lot of people make fun of Americans for wearing shoes in houses. You know, that's, I don't know. But um, it's just comfy. Actually, really, I got, I got this good discount. If you want the real answer, I'll give it to you right now. Uh, I got this discount on these Sperry shoes. that They were really sneaker. They're like, they like boat shoes, but they're sneakers. And I got a good deal on them just a couple days ago. And I haven't worn them in. And one of them was just kind of scratching my right foot to an extreme degree, so I figured, you know, I'm just gonna keep them upstairs. And plus, they're new, I don't wanna kinda degrade them, so that's a real reason, but also, I am the kind of person who would walk barefoot uh, in a hotel, 
So thank, thanks for asking. Any other questions? Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to get my barbecue now. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs>